In the first video of this series, I showed the peak heights of different jumps Mario can do. But this data actually relies on a couple of assumptions. The first is that Mario is standing still. If Mario is standing still in jumps, his vertical speed is set to 17 units per frame for 1 to 10 frames, depending on how long the button is held. Mario then decelerates and eventually falls due to gravity. But here's where another complication comes in. Mario is actually affected by gravity differently depending on which kind of jump he's doing. For a single jump, the gravity Mario experiences is 1.5 units per frame squared. This gives us the 105 to 258 unit range from part 1. But, if Mario is moving when he performs a single jump, he can go higher. When Mario starts walking, he accelerates to a maximum horizontal walking speed of 14. Mario's horizontal speed is a combination of his x-speed and z-speed, but here Mario has been perfectly aligned to the z-axis using hacks. If Mario jumps at this speed, the initial vertical speed will be 19.5. Jumping with a horizontal speed more than 14 doesn't yield any additional vertical speed beyond 19.5. Now, we can make Mario go a lot faster than 14 speed. How much faster? Well, to answer that, we need to talk about vectoring. When Mario leaves the ground, the game remembers the angle at which he left and applies a speed cap based on that angle. If Mario simply jumps at walking speed, he will maintain walking speed through the air. If Mario turns midair diagonally from the initial angle, he can go faster. This strategy is called vectoring. Now, Mario is getting the benefit of two perpendicular force vectors of equal magnitude, which results in a new top speed of square root 2 times as much. Here, Mario vectors a single jump and his vertical position is hacked so that he reaches his terminal velocity for horizontal and vertical speed. We can see the final horizontal speed is in fact 14 times square root of 2. His terminal Y speed is negative 35. Mario can actually go slightly faster than this just by rolling. A normal roll will give Mario 20 speed. When Mario roll boosts, his initial speed is 30. Mario only has this speed for one frame, after which his speed decays by 0.2% each frame. A double jump is very similar to a single jump. The gravity is the same, but there is a slight difference in Mario's vertical speed. If Mario is standing still in double jumps, he gets 19.5 vertical speed for 1 to 10 frames. The same as if he were to do a walking single jump. If Mario does a walking double jump, the vertical speed is 21 for 1 to 10 frames. A triple jump is where things get interesting. Mario must be moving to do a triple jump, so the vertical speed Mario gets is always 25 for 1 to 10 frames, the highest we've seen so far. But, Mario experiences different gravity during a triple jump. The gravity is only one unit per frame squared. Two-thirds of the gravity is single and double jumps. As a result, Mario can go significantly higher and further, while also taking longer to do so. As shown by the graph, Mario can get over a second of airtime from flat ground with a triple jump due to the reduced gravity. Now that we've covered the basic concepts surrounding jumps, we can go through the rest of them. The next highest jump is a ground pound jump, starting Mario at 38.5 speed under 1.5 gravity, reaching 513.5 height after 25 frames. Vaults, side flips, and back flips all start Mario at 31 speed under 1 gravity, meaning Mario reaches a height of 496 after 31 frames. A vault caps Mario's initial horizontal speed at 24. A side flip gives Mario 9 horizontal speed sideways, and a back flip gives him 5 speed backwards. A dive has 20 horizontal speed, with initial vertical speed of 26, under 2 gravity, which is the highest. A wall jump begins with 8.6 horizontal speed away from the wall, 
and 22.05 vertical speed under 0.95 gravity. A cap bounce has 16 horizontal speed and 21 vertical under 1 gravity. A regular roll actually gives Mario 10.5 vertical speed under 1.5 gravity in addition to the 20 horizontal speed. This is how Mario is able to roll over small gaps and obstacles such as Bowser's fire. Mario is only able to gain 42 height, which is less than half the height of the smallest single jump, so this can only be done with small gaps or hitboxes. A cap return jump gives Mario 22 vertical speed for 1 to 10 frames, depending on if the button is held, and afterwards Mario experiences 1.3 gravity. A spin jump begins with 19.6 vertical speed, and Mario experiences 0.4 gravity. A ground pound animation takes 24 frames, or 0.4 seconds, during which Mario has zero vertical speed and is able to dive, and afterwards he instantly gets negative 45 vertical speed until he hits something. Note that this means he's falling faster than his normal terminal falling speed of negative 35. A spin pound instantly gives Mario negative 36 and a half vertical speed, which follows 1.5 gravitational acceleration until the same limit of negative 45 is reached. When Mario throws Cappy, he gets 7 horizontal speed and 5.7 vertical speed under 0.3 gravity, the lowest of any action. However, he only experiences this gravity for 24 frames, after which gravity returns to a more normal 1.5. Mario can gain 57 units of height from this, and the optimal time to dive with that height is a 2 frame window, 19 frames or 20 frames after the cap throw. Similarly, a rainbow spin caps horizontal speed to 7, with 9.2 vertical speed under 0.8 gravity for 30 frames, after which gravity returns to 1.5. Now, what do we actually use these numbers for? Take the spinning athletics box jump for example. I calculated the optimal path and was able to execute it in emulator for the first time using this speed data. This is an ideal scenario for the data, as you don't have cappy, so movement is somewhat restricted, motion controls don't help you, and the movement people were doing consisted of a triple jump, wall jump, and dive, which are all movements I've documented. We know the maximum height from a triple jump is 550, and a bit more math tells us that the maximum height from a wall jump is 267, and the maximum height from a dive is 182. If you turn around quickly, Mario only loses about 28 height, and I was able to upwarp the remaining 30 or so height onto the 1,000 unit tall platform. So that's the idea, that with sufficient understanding of the movement system, we can make determinations about what paths and tricks in the game are possible, and what the optimal movement is. Currently, we're limited by the tools we have, but our understanding will only improve. We've really only scratched the surface here, as there are many more aspects of the game to dive into. So go ahead and subscribe if you don't want to miss the rest of the series.